it's me again. Okay, so I'm going to film a book haul inside this thing. So it is currently April 15th, 2021, and I do not expect to get this video out anytime soon. I still have to work on how to edit videos and learn software and buy a soft like it's a whole thing. But I am filming from eight books that I got at a book sale at a library. Had wanted to go to this library before. I never had gone before. So I went over there on Monday because I was, I guess, possibly wanting to avoid, but I just wanted to be around books. And so I got eight books from there. There was a book sale, so I spent eight, it was eight dollars for all of them because I could only pay in cash. And yeah, so these are the books that I got. I'm going to just fix that. So title, author, you know, the cover, and maybe just a little bit about the book if I can. I don't want to have this video be too long because it's like 7.15 at night and I want to go watch Station 19 and Grey's Anatomy. I have a horrible headache and I have to still eat dinner and take my meds and all of that. Even my morning meds because I didn't take my morning meds today. So this is the first book though. This is by Deborah Webb and it's called The Secrets We Bury. I believe this one was like, I want to say like 50 cents because it's, it's a small paperback. Here, I'll just read the back of it to you, it might be easier. So nothing stays buried forever. Dr. Rowan, Rowan, Rowan DuPont knows death. She grew up surrounded by it in her family's Victorian funeral home, and it's haunted her since the day her twin sister drowned years ago. Between her, father, her mother's subsequent suicide and the recent murder of her father, coming home to run the funeral home feels fitting, even if it leaves her vulnerable to an obsessive serial killer. Rowan refuses to let fear keep her from honoring her family, but the more time she spends back in Winchester, Tennessee, the more she finds herself questioning what really happened that fateful summer. Had her sister's death truly been an accident, and what pushed their mother to take her own life? The dark lake surrounding Rowan's hometown holds as many secrets as the bodies that float in its chilling depths, but Rowan is running out of time if she's going to uncover the truth before somebody sinks her for good. So, that is what that one was about. Seems cool. Pretty interesting. I think that was one of the last ones that I had picked out. This one is called Into the Darkest Corner, Elizabeth Haynes. It's that one. So this one goes psychological thriller. When young, pretty Catherine Bailey meets Lee Brightman, she can't believe her luck. Gorgeous, charismatic, and a bit mysterious, Lee seems almost too perfect to be true. But what begins as a flattering attention and spontaneous, passionate sex transforms into rage and jealousy, and Catherine soon discovers that Lee's dazzling blue eyes and blonde good looks hide a dark, violent nature. Disturbed by his increasingly erratic, controlling behavior, she tries to break it off. Turning to her friends for support, she's stunned to find they don't believe her. Increasingly isolated and driven into the darkest corner of her world, a desperate Catherine plans a meticulous escape. Four years later, Lee is behind bars and Catherine, now Kathy, is trying to build a new life in a new city. Though her body has healed, the trauma of the past still haunts her. Then Stuart Richardson, her attractive new neighbor, moves in. Encouraging her to confront her fears, he sparks unexpected hope in the possibility of love and a normal life. Until the phone, until the day the phone rings. So, this seems very interesting. I guess it was from, like, a Target, you know, pick kind of thing. That seems pretty cool, this one. Th those two are fiction, by the way. This one is a memoir. From what I can remember, it's called The Smallest Lights in the Universe by Sarah Seeger. And this one, she is an astrophysicist, like, a memoir of an MIT astrophysicist who searches for life in the wake of her husband's death as she's looking researching herself for galaxies and things like that so it goes sarah seeger has always been in love with the stars so many lights in the sky so much possibility now a pioneering planetary scientist seeger searches for exoplanets 
especially that distant, elusive world that sustains life. But with the unexpected death of Seeger's husband, the purpose of her own life becomes hard for her to see. Suddenly, at 40, she is a widow and a single mother of two young boys. For the first time, she feels alone in the universe. As she struggles to navigate her life after loss, Seeger takes solace in the alien beauty of exoplanets and the technical challenges of exploration. At the same time, she discovers earthbound connections that feel very, every bit as wondrous when strangers and loved ones alike reach out to her across the space of her grief. Among them are the Widows of Concord, a group of women offering advice on everything from home maintenance to dating and her beloved sons, Max and Alex. Most unexpected of all, there is another kind of one in a billion match, but in the stars, not, not in the stars, but here at home. So, this seems interesting, so I wanted to pick that out. This one is called Dear Nobody, The True Diary of Mary Rose. It looks like that. Call me a freak. I'm sick of it. It makes me want dangerous bad things. Drugs, hard drugs, and people who are bad for me. But I don't care because I'm so lonely and no matter what their intentions are, at least they're talking to me. They say that high school is supposed to be the best time of your life. I've never heard that. I've heard college is supposed to be the best time of your life. But, but what if that's just not true? More than anything, Mary Rose wants to fit in, to be loved, and she'll do whatever it takes to make that happen, even if it costs her her life. Told through the raw and unflinching diary entries of a real teen, Mary Rose struggles with addiction, bullying, and a deadly secret. So yeah. That's kind of cool. And the last sentence is just that her compelling story will inspire readers and remind them that they are not alone. So, young adult section. All right, this one is from Jennifer Weiner, Good in Bed. Goes, for 28 years, things have been tripping along nicely for Canny Shapiro. Sure, her mother has come charging out of the closet, and her father has long since dropped out of her world, but, her, but she loves her friends, her rat terrier Nifkin, and her job as pop culture reporter for the Philadelphia Examiner. She's even made a tenuous piece with her plus-size body. But the day she opens up a national women's magazine and sees the words loving a larger woman above her ex-boyfriend's byline, Candy is plunged into misery in the most amazing year of her life. From Philadelphia to Hollywood and back home again, she charts a new course for herself, mourning her losses, facing her past, and figuring out who she is and who she can become. So this one I was pretty intrigued by, and I was like, hmm. So I actually opened it up and I wound up reading a little bit of like the first chapter. And I was, because I was, like, interested, but then I was like, I don't know how interested, and I wound up being interested enough to buy it, so. This is a fiction book. I have three more left, and then that will be the end of this video, so that'll be right on time. This one is a non-fiction book. I believe it's, like, a memoir. Uh, 50 Things That Aren't My Fault. Uh, essays from the Grown Up Years and by Kathy Guiswhite. And let's see. She wrote a thing, a book called Kathy before. And now she returns with her signature wit and warmth in this debut essay collection about another time, a big transition. When everything starts changing and disappearing without permission, aging parents, aging children, aging self stuck in the middle. Introducing her parents to TiVo and finding purpose post retirement, helping parents downsize. Because it has like each chapter, each little essay of a chapter and some little drawings in, in the beginning of it, and just different things. So I thought it'd be interesting. Almost done. Alright, this one is called I Am Jesse by Jamie Collins. It is a memoir, so a survivor's powerful story of healing and hope. As a child I was known as Jessica Pelly. When I was nine I went to a sleep went to a sleepover at my friend's house for the weekend. While I was away my entire family was murdered. I would spend the next 30 years fighting, crawling, and clawing my way through the darkness. This wasn't just a national news headline, a cold case, or a crime, true crime show. It was my family and my life. I was the broken little girl left behind to tell the story. 
I am now Jesse in the pages of this unapologetic memoir, Set Free. So. So, yeah. Yeah, so it's like that. And it's kind of, like, broken up. Like, each chapter is, like, kind of starts off, like, Jessica, but, like, Jessie's more pronounced. And, like, what age she was at. And then, like, later on it becomes Jess Jessie. Or so. Maybe it actually jumps around. I don't actually know. I looked into it a little bit, but I, I didn't, like, super, super look into it. It's kind of, like, a nice sort of break from, like, the fiction stuff of all the true crime things and stuff like that. And, like, some someone's actual legitimate story and, like, all the sort of grapplings with that. So. And then this one is the last one that I got out. It's called The Forgotten Room by Lincoln Child. This actually, this is like a paranormal ghost story kind of one. The the cover of it and like the kind of concept reminds me a lot of Ash. And like it had like the mansion and stuff and Ash. And I forget who it's by exactly, but it was a fabulous book. I loved it so much. So this kind of reminded me of that and I wanted to like, I was like, yeah. So let's see. A long lost experiment of unguessable intent. A secret room ingeniously hidden inside a vast seacoast mansion. Professor Jeremy Logan, the quirky and charismatic enigmologist, enig enigmologist, 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 I don't I obviously can't say that word, <laughs> who specializes in solving problems of the strange or seemingly supernatural variety, receives an urgent summons from the director of Lux, one of the oldest and most respected think tanks in America. An unexplainable tragedy has taken place in the sprawling compound located on the coastline of Newport, Rhode Island. One of Lux's most distinguished doctors, overcame, overcome by erratic behavior, violently attacked his assistant before meeting with a gruesome, self-inflicted end. Deeply shaken by the incident and the bizarre evidence left behind from the doctor's final project, as well as recent troubling behavior among several of the think tank's other scientists, Lux fears there is something more sinister occurring within its walls and looks to Jeremy Logan to investigate. Logan quickly makes a surprising discovery. In a long dormant wing of the estate, he uncovers an ingeniously hidden secret room, unknown and untouched for decades. The room is essentially a time capsule filled with eerie machinery and obscure references to a top secret experiment known as Project S. As Logan attempts to unravel its meaning, he begins to discern what transpired in that room and why the frightening project was suddenly abandoned and sealed off many years before. As his work draws him ever deeper into harm's way, Logan soon unleashes a series of catastrophic events upon the rest of Lux and himself. So, oh. Interesting. Like, I remember, I don't really remember all the specifics for Ash, and I don't know... I feel like I did a book review on it, but I don't know necessarily if I did, but it definitely had like the same kind of like paranormal and like, this sounds more like it's uh, it's paranormal, but it's also like human experimentation kind of thing. And I mean, I guess, to, I guess Ash kind of was like that too. I know Lucas was, um, or Lewis, Lewis was like a experiment upon um, young adult who had, like, see translucent skin, like, you could see all his veins and his organs and stuff like that, and then there was the, the killings that were happening from the paranormal stuff, and then there was Eugenia, who was a character, like, the love interest and stuff, and they had to escape the, the mansion because it was, all this paranormal shit was happening. It was a really good book. It was a really good book. I loved it so much, but I don't remember who it's by. I'll have to find out. But, anywho, I'm gonna put these books back, one by one. But those are the books that I have bought, that eventually I will read one day. I will also share with you the books I'm currently reading, out from my local library network. And I hope to finish soon, so that I can actually get unblocked from the local library network so I can eventually take out more books. Right now I have the Minutemen library. I have to work on those books soon because they're going to be 
getting fines for it, and I've had them for like two years, so definitely time to actually do that. So yeah, I should actually get onto those books really soon because I just got the email about it today that those are going to start May 17th, I'm going to start getting fines. And I hope that you enjoyed the video. And oh, the books I'm currently reading, by the way. Yes, yes. I'm probably going to bring it down while I'm watching Grey's. So there's this one, which is It's Your Funeral by... Emily Reisbeck, Ellen Kramer, and Matt Kreutzer is a graphic novel, and I'm pretty, pretty excited. I'm 32 pages into it, I believe, and it's 208 pages, so that's this book. Getting into that one, so that's cool. And then I have this novel by Elizabeth Adler called One of Those Malad Boom Nights, so this is the novel that I'm going to try to get into. This one, I believe, is like yeah, 390 pages, so I want to get this done. I actually had was going to start a book called Touch by Claire North, I believe, and I want to, it's like 400 pages, so I was like, I'd rather just get unlocked sooner rather than later, so these two books are the last ones I have from my local library that I'm hoping to get done within the next couple of weeks to like read them, write the review, actually publish the review at some point because I have a couple of that I've I've handwritten and like have typed but I haven't like actually finished. So that'll be my plan because it's gonna take about a week before it actually gets cleared out of the whole quarantine system kind of thing. So I have to work on that. But and I haven't read today. I should really try to read and I'm also in the middle of Iron Man 2. So I have to finish watching that. But so much more to say. I could totally do a whole life update <laughs> and talk for like an hour, I swear. But for now, that's where I'm going to leave this video. Uh, if you are reading a book at the moment, or if you have picked out any cool things from the library, I really want to read some like cookbooks, home decorating, like interior design stuff, like gardening, like hobbies. I actually got, I bought a, like a craft kind of book, hobby book, so. I don't know, I would like to get into some of that stuff soon. But let me know what books you're into. Are you even going to libraries anymore? Are, are yours open? Because apparently some of them in Massachusetts are closed like to the public. Like You can't even go inside and browse, which is odd because most of the ones I've been going to have been like open to the public and you can go inside and stuff like that. Like you can't like you can like actually book like for half an hour like some of the rooms, but like you can't like do like you can't sit around in the couches kind of thing, but like I don't know, I was surprised to find out that some ho some hospitals, some libraries are like closed to the public still, like you can't, like you can do curbside pickup, but like you can't like go inside, so that's been interesting. But let me know if you have been to a library, if you have taken out any books, and what you are currently reading, or you want to make time to read. And that is all I have for you, so as always, thank you for watching, for sure, thank you for watching. Let me know if you liked or disliked this video, either one, that's fine. Let me know in a comment what you thought, or what you're reading, or the questions that I asked you already. And you can feel free to reach out to me on my other social media. I have fanfiction.net, archive of our own. I have a DeviantArt, I have a blog, and I have an email. So that is all I'm going to say. So as always, stay safe, take care, be well, much love and light to you. I will see you when I see you. And I hope that you're doing all right. Bye. I can see a lighthouse through the smoke. Everything is lost, I know.